What's up, everyone? Welcome to episode 91 of the Rudest Wrestling Podcast, brought to you always by us. It's fantastic, Matt. Matt, how was your Monday in uh, in Ohio going? It was good, man. Every every day we creep closer to wrestling season, the busier it gets around here, which is which is obviously a good thing, which is is what we want. And um, yeah, it's exciting. You know, you can sniff competition. Actually, competition started. We, That's what we're getting, started. getting ready to talk 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 about, right? Yeah, so, and, and this weekend is obviously Super 32, so uh, a huge weekend this this coming weekend. But yeah, last weekend was who's number one. Awesome competition. I think one of the probably, um, I, you know, you guys said journeyman, but I mean, I, I feel like who's number one kind of kicks off our fall for us every year. And it it kicked off with a powerful statement, I thought. I mean, that was... You thought so? You loved it? Did you love it? I thought there was there was good matches. Again, I, I, I always... I... I don't go all in just because it, it is October, early October. I don't expect these guys to be in peak shape, you know, even though more and more they, they have to be with these preseason I think events. They ha- but, I think they have to be for who's I number mean, with one. The rankings, I mean, all the, all the rankings, basically a lot, the majority of the ranking points and where you're going to establish yourself throughout the year happens in October. Now it happens at who's number one, super 32. Um, yes. Well, especially for small states, and this is, you know, my brother and I talk about this. I don't love Max, – Max Max hates it. Now, I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't love having to get geared up again right away in the fall. You know, I, Max feels as though there should be a set off season where you're not really training super hard. But in Wisconsin, there's really only one huge tournament, the Cheesehead, where you can get co- collegially recruited at, right? If you're in Ohio, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, you can go to Beast, Ironman, those type of things. But Wisconsin teams don't go to those. So our opportunity for our kids to be seen is is in the fall, right? Big big tournaments like Super 32. And then in the spring with, um, you know, say a FILA, UWW Cadets, UWW Juniors, Fargo, that kind of stuff. And then obviously they're going to be wrestling during the high school season with the high school teams. So they're, they're competing and training heavily then. And so, you know, it may, does make for a kind of long season. But nevertheless, it's like, like you said, Matt, this is where you get recruited at, especially yeah. if you're from a small state. Yeah, I mean, it. it's – I kind of lean on the side of where Max is at. I would love to have more of a developmental season – um, for wrestling, well, I think I'm not saying I, I'm not saying I disagree with his desire to have that. I'm saying right. I disagree with the reality of the situation. Right. The was, the reality is it's a necessary even evil for a guy like Keegan who is wrestling this weekend, who's yep. who's prohibited from competing out of state during the scholastic season. Yeah, you have to go where the competition is because the the fact of the matter is rankings and results kind of drive drive the financial bottom line for a lot of these a lot of these programs so you're you're in, in essence you're cutting your nose to spite your face if you don't want to compete in some of these the, in the super 32s or who's number 1 and well, a yeah, lot of I these mean, big time preseason tournaments yeah and the way the way I kind of pitch it to Max is I, I do agree I, I wish there was a more set off season and you know I wish Wisconsin teams competed in a lot of those big in season tournaments so we didn't always have to gear up for the fall stuff, right? But the way I sell it to them is like, hey, man, we've had a handful of our guys. They don't need to play super highly in a national tournament five out of five times, right? And some, I'll tell you, Peyton Mako. Peyton Mako failed like four times in a row, right? And then he he has the one breakthrough at Flow National where he takes 30, beat a couple really good guys, and has that crazy match with Sammy Sasso. And all of a sudden, the next week, you know, it didn't hurt that he had a really high ACT and a 4.0 GPA, right? But yeah, uh, the next week, helps. he's he's getting called by a whole bunch of colleges. And so, it's like, he had one breakthrough. Um, you know, we've had a few kids that have had that experience. So it's like, you have to take opportunities. You don't know when you're going to be injured or when you're going to be sick. And so, if you take your opportunities from, say, four down to one or two, and maybe in that one or two, then you get hit, you know, hurt, sick. You don't have a great training. Maybe you have a bad draw, whatever it is then you're really limiting your opportunities to be seen by college coaches. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the reality is it only takes that one result to earn yourself a ton of money. And there's, there's a lot of money to be had, even though there's not a a huge number of D one programs out there, there, that's still a lot of money. And it takes that one result to just tip the scales and, and really make your college experience much more affordable than it normally would be. If you're just, prohibited from competing out of state and you got to, you know, and you're, you're, you know, 
beholden to your state championship results. And um, because the reality is with a lot of smaller wrestling states, there is a perception on the level of talent that's there. Right. And unfortunately there, I mean, you know, when you have Pennsylvania or Ohio or New Jersey or some of these yeah, really th- high caliber those guys, states, they don't have to compete out of season because they, they get it in season. And not, not only Matt, not, some of those schools, some of those Pennsylvania and New Jersey, even if they don't go to Beast or Iron Man, I mean, they just see so many tough teams on a regular basis that they're going to get seen. People are going to watch those matches. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of those teams do that. But uh, do a lot of those kids do go to the bigger tournaments, but I don't think they necessarily need to. No, I think you're right. But I think for, for you know, some of the kids out of state, it's it's necessary. You have to. I mean, you just don't yes. have a choice. Or you can, but then don't complain when you, you don't get those big money offers that you're looking for. Yes. 100%. Okay. I, so I think you and I are, are both on the same page there. Um, let, let's talk about who's number one. Uh, it was a fun event. I uh, I love it. Rear. I, well, let me let me ask you this first question. What did you think about it being in Iowa City? Um, you know, I loved the sn- the snake pit as they call the Lehigh, where it was that small area. It was kind of really, really, really compact. It was sold out, even though it was only I don't know thirteen hundred or, or whatever the number was. Right, not a big number. With Iowa City, um, you know, you had this really big stadium. Right? It sits sixteen thousand or something, and it, they said it was their biggest crowd ever at first. Who's number one? But it still felt empty to me. What do you what do you what do you make of that? Take it, leave it. Want to move would, somewhere I would, else? What I would, would leave do? it. I think it's I think it's a it's a it's a special place for the athletes to compete because Carver Hawk sure, is yeah. one of is one of the bucket lists. Like if you had a bucket list, I know I know even Pat Downey was saying, Hey, I finally get to wrestle in Carver Hawk. <laughs> I, like, I, I, I mean, saw that. Yeah. So I mean, for the athletes, you couldn't couldn't i mean it's one of a handful of places in america like if you gave gave the choice to an athlete where would you like to compete for who's number one their choice would be hey carver hawkeye would definitely be in the top five so from an athlete experience i think it's great from a fan experience um and a environment experience i don't think it's ideal because when you got sixteen thousand people uh sixteen thousand seat arena and you're only sitting three or two or three it it feels up empty but I tell you yeah. what, they they made some noise in certain matches. Now it yeah, just happened to be true. some some I, some Iowa commits, but um, I <laughs> thought that was definitely exciting for those guys and exciting for the Hawkeye fans. Like, hey, here's the future, here's the future coming, and here's our future competition that we're looking at as well. So I think yeah. those fans, I think the level of appreciation, even though the the attendance wasn't huge, just the 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 wrestling IQ of the fans and the knowledge base of the fans probably made it. A, a pretty good environment, but yeah, I would, if if I had my druthers, if I had to pick and choose, obviously you would love to pack out arena and and wrestle yeah. in a packed out, you know, you know, standing room only or an environment like that. Lehigh, I think, even though Lehigh has Stabler and eight thousand seat arena going into the Snake Pit, um, I think is always cool with a a, a couple thousand seats packed yeah. out. And there was always only. a lot of lo- local kids out there too. Your know, Jersey. Jersey slash PA kids, which made it fun. And um, obviously, I, I do think, to your point, I think the Iowa commits, right? I think the crowd got behind them. Um, but there was, I don't believe there was any local Iowa kids, correct? There was none. No. 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 There was no, there was no Iowa kids, period. I guess the closest you had was uh, Nebraska and Jacase and Burks. And he was, uh, he's actually an Oklahoma State commit. So uh, I don't, <laughs> I think they were cheering for Jesse Yabar in that match. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's go through these matches. Um, I will I'll be honest with you. I watched about eighty percent of them. Um, my dad had a wedding, so I was kind of well. Luckily, my son fell asleep in the van, so I had a, I had an excuse <laughs> to stay out in the van for a few extra minutes and watch a couple matches. Um, now, did your dad actually get married in Iowa? No, we were not in Iowa. We no? were in uh, okay. Western Western Wisconsin, kind of in the, in the middle of nowhere. Now he lives so, in Iowa now, though, right? He he's they're they're moving now. Okay. Um, yeah, I yeah, was so wondering. We didn't we didn't really catch up. I'm like, you would have been in Iowa, just not in Carver Hawkeye. Yeah. Yeah. One. yeah. Yep. No, we we gotcha. were in western middle of nowhere, western Wisconsin. Gotcha. Um. Okay, Jesse Mendez, Ryan Jack. Uh, good match. Goes down to the wire. Uh, wins on a last second. I guess debatable call where a lot of people thought this maybe should have went two and two. I watched it. Um, 
I could see it either way. I, I, I could see two and two. I could see two for Mendez, uh, like it was called. I'm, I'm not super passionate either way. Uh, how do you feel about that call and, and the match? Yeah, I mean, this this goes back into the discussion about the revel- uh, the the relevance of this event, and when the, when the ranking is on the line, you you want to make sure the calls are right, and when the stakes are are this high, and there, there are stakes here, even though it's exhibition per se, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, you would like to make sure that you've got some really high level high level officiating, and I think they had some decent officials out there. Um, but yeah, you hate to see. I mean, the balance of a match like this come down to a subjective call. Um, what do you, you think? Two, where would you have went with the call? Um, I thought it, I I would have gone. I would have said it was the right call, but I could see where it could have gone two and two as well. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, it's. I wasn't. I, I'll, I'll have to be honest. I wasn't as heavily invested. In, I watched it because I know we need to discuss it. I like yeah. to see. I I. You know, more or less at this time of the year, I, I still fall into where I am, where I used to be as a college coach and how I evaluate things during the mm, preseason. I don't put I don't put strict, you know, allowances on on what the result is. I kind of more evaluate on, on what I'm seeing from the skill set of the athletes yeah. and some of the takeaways you can get there. So, you know, obviously these are two high level guys. It was it was a great match. I mean, and, and yeah. that's that's the unfortunate thing that it came down to a subject subjective call. Um, but and okay. and case in point, in a lot of these guys like Jack, will be around on the East Coast wrestling high level guys. I don't know how much Mendez will get out of state, and so I believe guy, Mendez is going to. I believe both these guys are going to Super Thirty Two this weekend. How do I check that? Uh, I think it might have been a full, I'll, I'll, I'll get an answer for you. I think they're both going super this week, which makes it fascinating. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's kind of what's potentially fascinating that, that we could actually have a rematch of some of these matches, you know, one week later. Yeah. That's, that's crazy, crazy turnaround. So obviously, you know, Keegan didn't want to do a turnaround because he would have to wrestle a different style. Uh, you know, he did a freestyle match and a turn on be doing folk style with these guys did the same thing. Well, I, I don't know. Now, don't did, quote me on that one. I'm going to try to search these entries. Um, now let okay, me ask you, I know out. there, there was a cut, there was some, some freestyle matches, some folk style matches, um, some modified freestyle. I think modified was, that, yeah. Well, the, what'd you the, think the, about the that? Downy match, the downy match. Um, no, 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 no. Let's, let's, I'm going to save that for later. What'd yeah, you think okay, about, I was gonna uh, say. what did you think about specifically, um, some freestyle, some folk style? I liked it. I liked it. I'm, a, really? I'm all about just good wrestling. Um, now, I'm sure some diehards would say, hey, freestyle is over. We're into folk style season. Everybody should be wrestling folk style. How did they actually present it to the guy? Did, did Keegan so have I guess a choice? From what I heard, the number one guy got to choose. Whoever was gotcha. number one okay. got to say, you know, we want to do this or that. And then the number two guy would have to accept. Um, I, I didn't love it, Matt. I thought... Um, you know the that even just me, right? The thought process of having to change back to what I, back and forth from what I'm watching. Am I watching freestyle or folk style? And every every match, you know, a lot of the matches change. And then the second thing is like, look, I love freestyle. I love folk style. Also, it's folk style season. Let's do folk style here. If you want to, if you wanted to say, hey, let's do a let's do a freestyle. Who's number one? Man, I don't hate that idea. I'd watch it. No. I, I I would enjoy it. Uh, but if we're gonna do who's number one in October. And we're done with freestyle. Well, let's let's just go folk style. Let, let's kick this thing off right. All folk style matches. Um, so I would actually vote against if I if I get a vote, which I don't believe that I do get a vote. If I get a vote, I'm gonna vote for the fact that we just go from now on, uh, just folk style. I I would be fine with that, and I think that's actually a pre- probably a pretty good idea. Why don't we do a who's number one in freestyle? I think there's plenty that, of that'd be fun. guys that would be all about it. Um, yeah. Do that. So I'm, I'm interested to, from Keegan and Gallagher's perspective, like why why did Keegan feel like he wanted to do freestyle? Obviously, it turned out to be a really good choice on his part. No, no. Um, Gallagher was the number one oh, ranked. Gallagher. Remember, yes. That's, that's the thing. Why would, I mean, because Gallagher's a good folk styler. I'm interested to i wonder what his logic or his rationale was for actually choosing to wrestle freestyle 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would guess, listen, I, I didn't talk to Patrick Gallagher. I would guess he thought, you know, Keegan was more dangerous. And, and Keegan's dangerous everywhere, right? But <laughs> yeah, he would say obviously. This, his scrambles are more effective <laughs> in folk style. And he's also a really good rider um, in folk style. So I would say maybe Gallagher thought that, you know, he had a, he just won Fargo, obviously, a few months ago. So maybe he thought he was going to have more success in, in freestyle. Well, it turned guess. out uh, Keegan's parterre game is uh, pretty on point, it looked like, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, we, we've been working on that that position. Dayton Fix is so good there, obviously. So we've yeah. been working on that for like two years with not obviously not only Keegan, but our entire team. And Keegan's gotten really, really good at that leg in, hop over, uh, attack the bar. And then I, you know, pay, it crosses over to Folkstyle as well also, right? Um, yeah, without Same type of position. Um, okay, so let's go. This match was crazy. The next one, Serrano Van Ness. Um, Matt, I got to tell you, I was watching it on mute because my kid was sleeping. And so Serrano throws Van Ness in the first period, has him on his back, and then they, they just stopped it and they brought them up. Uh, and then Van Ness proceeded to put on a clinic after that. It was pretty amazing. Why did they stop them and bring them off their back? Can someone tell me that? I have that? no idea. I have no idea. If someone could, I would, I would like to know. I'm not sure why okay. they did it. I have no idea. Yeah, that that was uh, that was weird to me. I I didn't know what was going on there or why they stopped them. Um, Surround hit that you know hip toss and looked like it was fairly close to a fall multiple times. And I think there was like I thought maybe it was a period break, but there would be like twenty seconds left in the period, and then Van Ness got that takedown at the end of the first. Yeah, but Van Ness he gassed uh, Serrano out. Uh, which is maybe that's, that's what you would say as a college coach. You don't want to put a huge amount of uh, emphasis on this preseason because guys maybe aren't always in shape in the preseason. But uh, Van Ness gassed Serrano out and, and put a hell of a pace on him and then ended up getting a bunch of takedowns. Get, I believe got the tech fall late in the second period, correct? Correct. Yeah, I mean, Van yeah. Ness, I mean, when he gets on a roll, that I mean, when that guy's rolling, he's, I mean, he's as talented as anybody in the country. That's not a big statement. He's wrestling and who's number one. But yeah, I mean, when he, it tell, seems I don't like believe in telling he, Matt, Matt, please, please don't use that terminology. <laughs> hey, you want to hear something so funny? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to pull back the curtain because you guys are watching the Rudis podcast. I'm going to pull back the curtain for you guys a little bit. So I, I put this tweet up. Talent doesn't exist. Uh, and, and part of what I do, it's it's funny. Part of it is just to really piss mad. It makes people so mad when I say that. <laughs> I mean, so mad. So Yanni Yanni retweets me, or I can't remember if he quote tweeted me or retweeted me or what, whatever he said. Um, but then people went after him too, right? And Yanni is such a good guy. He's not used to being a bad guy. So then he starts like trying to fully explain it to people. And I said, listen, Yanni, it's Twitter. You don't. You shouldn't feel the need to to uh, you know make all these people feel good by explaining this because obviously my statement is it's like 74 characters, Matt talent doesn't exist. Obviously my thoughts are like way deeper than that. I could probably write a book on my thoughts on the topic, you know? And so there's much, much explanation past that. But just saying, if you just say talent doesn't exist and just leave it at that, it makes people so angry. It's hilarious. Oh, it's, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, such a divisive statement, right? And oh, it's so, I, I, I think so it's, mad. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> because I think, what do you think it is at the heart of the issue? Like, I, I think at the heart of the issue, most people need to rationalize why someone is better than themselves. If, if your statement is correct, that talent does not exist, that yeah. means it's a level playing field for everyone. And most people yeah, like I, I, to, I, in their mind, they like to rationalize why someone is better than them. Right. I think yes. that's uh, from a base, a baseline argument. I think that's the heart of it. Like it's to say that everybody's on an even playing field. That's man. It, that's a hard thing for people to accept that someone's just better than yeah. you. They would, they would rather yeah, I, point, I, point to a reason. I, I think, I think that, that, I think that has a lot to do with people's anger at the statement, you know? And then the other thing is just like, they don't, they don't believe their eyes that they see this guy doing something and it's like, Oh my God. That 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 guy is somehow the same as them, and so obviously uh, now we're getting. Oh my gosh, man, we're not. We're definitely not going to get to the <laughs> upper weight college rankings. We start talking about going down this 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 avenue. So I, uh, you know, okay. Well, I said we pull the curtains back, so we might as well pr pull the curtains back, Matt. Well, who knows if we're even going to get to the rest of the Super Thirty or who's number <laughs> one at this point? So what I think is that there uh, there's certain genetic prerequisites for certain things. For example. 
being an NFL lineman. Like, you can't be at 200 pounds to be an NFL lineman. It's impossible, right? So there are some prerequisites on size, right, to do certain things. But then once you hit those genetic prerequisites, all right, 100, 100 meter dash, you are going to be fast. So then it's like, I, I've seen some studies say, well, there's only a 17, you can only improve yourself by 17% by training. That, and, and, you know, they're trying to say, well, that's not that much. And to me, Matt, it's like, well, if, if you're running – a uh, 100 meter dash at say 10, 10 seconds, 1.7 seconds. That is like an effing eternity. That's an eternity. Do you realize how long 1.7 seconds is? It is that, forever at 100 meter that dash. Blows that blows that blows the world record away. 1.7 seconds. Um, yeah. So so when you try to make the argument that that you can only get better by 1.7 seconds, it's like well you know or say take a take a um. Right, take a, a a mile, Matt. You know, a, f- a four minute mile. If you add seventeen percent to that, I mean, that's that you were talking almost forty seconds. Like you're, you know, it's just not in the ballpark. So, um, so obviously, and so then we take something like wrestling. The thing, my thing is that, you know, there's so many different ways you can be successful. So many different body types. So many different wrestling styles. That it's like, can you define? Okay, listen, we'll take myself. My strength and speed is terrible. I mean, really, really low level compared to other high level athletes that I'm competing against. So it's like, well, it's my are you gonna factor in my intelligence? Are you gonna factor in my perseverance? Is is that part of talent or was that something that was built would I built that over time? Like, how are you gonna quantify those things? Yeah, and I don't want to dip. I don't want to dip my toe into this. I, I'm I'm fine having a conversation. Well, no, come on, Matt. You got to say something. I, I know. I know. If I jump into this, like, oh, I I let's haven't go, researched this. I haven't researched this. Well, my, just... my one thing is like, I I I completely understand what you're getting, but also I think with you, you have mm-hmm. one of the most brilliant minds in wrestling and in combat sports. I really believe that, but also. Isn't your mind the strongest muscle in your entire body? And yeah. So, I mean, w- would people say that you are genetically di- predisposed to a higher level of achievement because you have a more powerful mind than everybody? But that's so. I, I agree. So, listen, I totally agree with that statement. That's where I'm saying, like, when we talk so about does your, talent, what I'm saying does does your brain qualify as a talent matrix? Yeah. Well, and then, right? but then, and then, how many parts of your brain is there, Matt? Right? There's, 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 there's some kids who are incredibly intelligent, but then maybe they don't have the discipline or, or the perseverance, or right. So, if you put out this like graph of the things you needed to be a great wrestler, right? And you could put this wrestler, and he had strength and speed and endurance and and intelligence and perseverance, right? And we 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 probably end up with like twenty different categories of things you could be successful. You know, are you know things that you would need to be like the like if we could be the ultimate wrestler, we'd have like these twenty or twenty five categories, and so obviously you know myself, I'm gonna score very very high on some categories, not so high on other ones. But then it's like, then I go all the way back to well, okay, my kids, I'm watching my kids grow up, and my kids are around wrestling a lot. They're seeing it. Are they taking something in? I'm playing kind of rough with them. Is that benefiting them when they fall down and they cry? And you know. I, at some point, if it's really bad, I'll give them some compassion. But most of the time, I'm saying, hey, dude, get up. It ain't that bad. You know? So it's like, okay, is that environmental factors from a young age? Is that genetic? Or is that being now, right? Was Matt, was your dad tough on you? Did that benefit you, right? I mean, so it's like there's so many environmental factors. It's like it, it, people want to say talent. And they just want to throw it out there and say, oh, that person's talented. It's like, listen, we're, we're dealing with this gigantic, complex to algorithm that's huge the environmental factors from the time they're six months six days old right and now you want to tell me oh it's just talent it's just talent they're just talented. no i like, mean because if not you, you i'm not it, saying you i'm just saying the people on twitter yeah, yeah yeah because i mean it is i mean it can break down to the whole nature versus nurture argument but i think that's a pretty yeah. simplistic approach but i think the environmental factors play a huge, a, a, a huge factor in this. Because I mean, you look at a lot of 
professional athletes whose fathers were successful at a certain level. And you wonder why I think a lot of times people just think, oh, they were genetically blessed because their yeah. their father was an NBA All-Star, NFL All-Star. But, and I would argue, yeah, do they have maybe some genetic advantages, but also they have a huge environmental advantage because they yeah. see what's possible at such a, a young age. The norm the norm is the exception to what other people's norm is, right? If you put yes. yourself on, on an NFL sideline from the time you're you're five until you're fifteen, if your dad has uh, NFL playing yeah. career of ten well, years, well, you know, Matt, let's talk about let's let's use uh you know, one of your one of your buddies that doesn't believe in talent, Tommy <laughs> Rollins, like his kids. Okay, first of all, his parents are both Division One athletes, so there probably is some genetic composition that's slightly better than others, right? But that Tommy's got. In his backyard, Ohio State, he's up there all the time. They're watching Kyle Snyder train, Nathan Tomasello. Like, tell me that doesn't benefit them hugely, immensely. Even if there's, even if Kyle Snyder and Nathan Tomasello aren't coaching those guys, just to have that in their presence, to watch that, to see that, 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 I mean, right, there's immense amount that you're gaining from that type of stuff. No, I mean, I always tell people when, you know, I had two old, older brothers that were really good at wrestling and they won multiple ti- multiple state titles. And so just by observing them, I was naive enough to think, well, yeah, I'm going to win three or four state titles. Easy. That's just what I, <laughs> yeah, that's just no, what I do. Right. It's just, yes. it's just the standard that that's I just what you're supposed mind, to do. Right. That's what I'm supposed to do. Yes. If I don't do this, I'm, I actually, you know, failed in essence, in my mind, I, I rationalized like if I don't do minimum what they do, it's, a, it's yeah. a fail. I should do more because they actually had the hard part. They had to blaze the trail for me. And so I had Seriously. a much easier time being successful because I got to see and witness everything that they did on a daily basis from a young age. And so when I went yeah. in there, you know, and then you just automatically absorb different traits and different mentalities and, and different approaches that are outside of what you're genetically predisposed for my mind was expanded to a, a level that others others aren't you know and you you look at I, even in our neck of the woods here you know st paris graham they're going on i think they're on the verge of winning yes. their 20th state title and well that matt matt, guys, matt they, the only reason that is is because kids in the st paris graham district are born different they're born to do single legs and chops right. tilts right. that they're born that way they come out of the womb they're <laughs> shooting single legs chop tilts and st paris graham is exceptional in that way because they birth kids who do that stuff yeah right are you supposed to beat them how are you supposed to beat them when they got those impossible right yeah they're, they're genetically just come out of the womb just <laughs> chopping out of the womb Chop, tilt, I mean, out of the whoop. You know, I mean, Ben, as much as you've talked about this, you know this is a book, right? The talent myth. That's what you should call it. Oh, the talent well, myth. Well, there's you could definitely there, write a book about I it. I think is there a book called The Talent Myth? So the one the one I love that I, I would point to a lot of people is called The Talent Code. And um, right. Daniel Coyle, he's one of my favorite authors. And it's to me, it's like you know, you, it's essentially he picks out these talent hotspots and he talks about a lot of things. And, you know, you brought up Graham in the same pair as Graham, maybe on a lower level because, well, now that they're heavy, they are having guys win NCAA titles, uh, many of them. But, you know, if you look at talent should be, if there, if talent is the determiner of success, and most people wouldn't say fully, but they, most people would think it, they, they would give it more credence than I think it deserves. They would say that talent should be equally distributed, yet you're having these hot spots. Um, and that's, you know, in talent code, they, they talk about these hot spots of people who become successful on a world level, and you're having a whole bunch of them in a really small portion, you know, a really small area. And it's because I think, in my estimation, it's because there's a whole bunch of environmental factors that are allowing these kids to, you know, be great at what they do. And I think if you look in any field, you're going to find the same thing. A whole bunch of elite level performances clustered in small areas because the environmental factors in those areas are so strong that kids can't help but succeed. If you grow up in St. Paris, Graham, and, and you're, you're halfway combative and halfway athletic, you're probably going to be pretty freaking good at wrestling. Yeah, that's without just, a doubt. That's just I mean, what it is. I mean, let's let's take it even up a level, and we we touch on this during the world championship. Penn State, but, Penn freaking State. Well, we could, you, and oh. let's let's even go a, a notch above that and talk about Dagestan, right? Oh, the, yes. Mean, 
I mean, no, that Matt, is... they, they are born to wrestle in Dagestan. They are not <laughs> trained. They're, there's not environmental factors. They come out of the womb, freaking hitting duck unders, high crotches, gut wrenches. And I'm sure some people can make that argument. But to your point, let's let's take a step back and, and talk about Penn State, right? They've, they've won, what, eight out of the last nine? And yes. from yep. re- with wrestlers all over the country. So what yes. what are the environmental factors within Penn State? Obviously, people will say they get the best talent. Well, you know what? There's a ton of really high level talent that goes elsewhere and doesn't succeed at the same level that Penn State's yes. been performing at for the last decade. And so, yes. what are that, the that, environmental that's, that's factors the argument right there with with within the program? Because they're coming from all parts of the country, right? I yes. think Kale. One of Kale's biggest, one of one of his biggest decisions to go to Penn State, the concentration of high level wrestlers in the state of Pennsylvania, is there. But he's also pulling from around the country. So why? Well, what's insane about that, Matt, is right now Iowa has more Pennsylvania starters in their lineup than Penn State does by a long shot. That 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 blows my mind, actually. And high level talent, but they haven't won a national yes. title. So, but that's that's their say, biggest threat right now. I the biggest threat to it's, it's so funny what you said there because the biggest threat to to Kale right now is Iowa, and they're doing it by getting Pennsylvania wrestlers out from underneath Kale's thumb, which should be Kale, one of Kale's greatest assets. It's hilarious to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's We're, it's a fascinating. I mean, it's a fascinating argument, fascinating discussion. And yes, that's that's now we're way off topic. Now, <laughs> now we're talking about the national t- man. We got from talent <laughs> to the to the national team race in about twelve in about twelve minutes. Yeah. Wow. To Dagestan hey, we need and, and parts of Dagestan. So yes, to Dagestan. Okay. Hey, we need to get back. We that was that was funny. We need to get back on who's number one, or we're never going to finish, and we're definitely not going to get to the upper weights today. We're, we'll talk about them. Another time. Okay. J- Jesse Ibar, Jacason Burks. This is Iowa versus Oklahoma State commits. Um, really high level match. Ibar pulls it out at the end. What do you want to say about this match? Yeah, I think it's great. I mean, one of the things that I like about this event is it's like a precursor of the dual meets and the national championship race to come in future years. So I think it's exciting for fans to get a preview of their college commits, who's going to be coming in, and get a better understanding of who they are and what they're about before they even get to the program. So that's that's what I took away. Like, yeah, it's, it was a great match, but also it's a match that we're probably going to see for the next four or five years. So that that's yeah. pretty cool. Not only in 100%. this match, but probably in a handful of these matches. Yes. Uh, I, I agree. Um, okay, Figueroa Pulin. Uh, Figueroa really was, uh, I mean, very dominant in this match, really in every position, in my opinion, which I didn't see. I thought this was going to kind of be uh, a very close match uh, back and forth. And and, and Figueroa kind of dominates uh, Steve-O, who has had tons of success. Obviously, he's ranked number two in the country, right? But Figueroa far, far and above Pulin. Now, there's there's an age gap here, right? Steve-O, he's a young Ooh. kid, right? Is he is he a freshman sophomore I don't think now? he's that young anymore. Uh, let's see. Where am I going to go find Well, him? he was on the where cadet team this year, so he's got to be under 16, right? Well, uh, no, it goes up to 17 now. 17. So, yeah. But if you, it depends on where you last. Let's see. Okay. Does this have their age here? Okay, hold on. Oh, damn it. Steve-O got knocked off the list. Okay. Um I will, I will give you an, give me one second. I'll give you an answer. Figueroa's a junior. Nope, they're both juniors. Figueroa's a junior wow. and Steve O's a junior. I think Figueroa. Well, no, Figueroa was on the junior team. What are the cadet team? Wasn't he? Or am I dreaming? I know his if sister not, there's was a right. One year age gap. Yes, Gracie Figueroa I th- was. I believe he was. I, th- I I know he's been on a team. Was he on this year's team? Yes. I can't. I can't really remember. Um, I can't remember either. Yeah, I just think. Nope. Figueroa, I mean, he, he's really slick. He's slick. Wow. He do you good. know what Flo? Do you know what Flo just did? Flo just added on. The, if you go to the high school rankings component, uh, Matt, they have rank, year, name, school, state, college, previous rank, and then they added a column called Next, and it shows where they're competing next. How cool is that? That's pretty That's badass. Super cool. That's a really, so it's a su- a really nice yeah. super thirty two for a whole bunch of these guys. Wow, that's wild. That's really yeah. That's a good component. Blown away. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy how many kids are competing at Super 32 in some of these brackets, too. It's like all of them. <laughs> in some of these brackets, it's like damn damn near all of them. It's wild. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Let's go. Um, who's next? We got Volnovich, Vasquez. I, I will comment on this one. Uh, Vasquez got two takedowns for his period. He chooses down. I don't know what he was thinking here, Matt. Volnovich is a Bad hammer choice. on top. <laughs> we had him, uh, he came up to Hammer Camp, our, our AWA Hammer Camp a couple years back. He rode everyone with the legs. He was throwing legs on everybody. Uh, and he did the same thing to Vasquez, grinds him out, turns him almost three times, got him over twice, pins him, power half. I mean, that, that's got to be impressive to you, right? Super impressive. But also, like, that's, talk about a bad, bad judgment call. I mean, I, I, I Terrible. know, like... I know when you're one of the top guys, like it's a principal thing. It's a pride thing probably. But if you're wrestling it, who's number one, the objective is to win, not show how, you know, principled you are. Right. Um, so if they, I don't know if, if they didn't do their homework, but either way, shame on them. If they did do their homework and they still thought they could have got, gotten out, well, you got what you wish for, but if they didn't do yeah. their homework, well, you got, you, you got what you deserved a little bit. Yeah. I, I, I agree. hundred percent. Um, Okay, uh, next match, Saunders at Chimendia. At Chimendia, hammered Josh Saunders. I, I actually, Saunders is really good defensively, so I thought this would be a little closer. I was kind of surprised that at Chimendia 10-0'd him. I wasn't that surprised. I mean, I was, I was really? super impressed. Yeah, I mean, this guy's, I mean, especially in, in freestyle. Like, Yeah, it's his native style. <laughs> I mean, it's his native style. I mean, he... Showed what he can do in freestyle at a juniors this year, and showed what he could do in Greco without ever wrestling in Greco, right? Um, yeah, he's probably not a an age group guy. I don't know an age group guy that could really compete with Etchemendia at this point. Do you? Uh, I mean, one for obviously, I'd like to throw Keegan in there, but Keegan is a little bit bigger at this point. Um, it should be interesting. 50, I've, 52. I've heard. Let's see. So, now I, I think he takes out Sonny Santiago fairly easily. In, in I my think opinion. so. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and going down a weight. Yeah. I mean, I just don't see many guys, even within ten pounds of him, that that are going to compete with him. But I've heard things. It should be interesting to see, you know, if we ever see this this kid in college, right? I've heard. It's all. It's always difficult with an international kid. Um, to navigate. Well, he said he's going to uh, Iowa State now, correct? Is that what he yeah, said? but I, I, I've heard there's some eligibility things. There's, sure, you can, you course. can. I mean, a kid can commit anywhere. That doesn't mean he's sure. going to be eligible yeah. to compete. And, and yep. that's what I'm wondering. Like, I'm sure Dresser was like, "Hey, yeah, if this kid's available and he wants to commit, that that's great. And if we can get a find a way to get him eligible, even better. But yeah, it's worth it's 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 worth looking into." And I think that's sure. that's what it is. I, I've heard he's got eligibility issues. I don't know specifically. I believe it's with the uh, the eligibility center and uh, passing his core mm -hmm. courses. It could be there could be a variety of things with with his um, being an international student, even though he he lives in the states. Limited high school education stateside. Um, yeah. those are always tough things to navigate through. So you don't know. I mean, that's probably going to be be dependent on you know, the NCA, how they review the case. But yeah, I mean, you would love to see you. It, it'd be interesting to see, you know, how he develops on the folk style side of things. Cause you know, in freestyle, he's pretty darn good. Beast. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, Santiago master Giovanni, not, not super exciting. Uh, in my opinion, Santiago gets the win. There was kind of a close takedown on the edge in, in the third period. Um, I don't know. Not, not, I don't have too much else to say about that. Uh, what do you got to say? No, not a whole, whole lot as well. We can keep moving. Okay. Keegan, we kind of touched on Keegan. Keegan, We're fantastic. Dominant, I loved man. it. Awesome. Look great. I was so happy for him. Let's, let's no, keep going. I, I, guess my, I guess my only argument here, Ben, would be, yeah. are you really going to – and and believe me, I, I believe Keegan's – you know, deserves a number one ranking, but I th I'm sure yeah. there's some people out there that would argue it's like, well, no, are you really going to give him the number one ranking based on a freestyle result? 
Do they do? Yeah, I mean, they, will they change the rankings all spring based on freestyle results? No, I, I, I mean, I know, I know. Yeah, Fargo, uh, Fargo, UWW, Cadets, UWW Juniors are heavily influenced freestyle rankings. But yeah, I mean, uh, to your point, freestyle and folk style are significantly different. And uh, I mean, honestly, if they did a little bit different, you know, if they had different rankings, I wouldn't. Be, it would be that would be too tough, man. That would be that would be so difficult. Um, but yeah, it they're, really they're would. Way but different. some people would. You know, some some people would argue talk about an environmental advantage. Who Keegan has yeah. to work with you, you and Max, and all the coaches at AWA. Of course, I mean, he def he definitely has an envir environmental advantage. Well, um, but the uh, <laughs> what's his name? Patty Patty's at St. Ed. St. Ed's at Patty's a beast. All American this like is true. Thirty four years or something. So they got great environment. We're just trying to create a great environment in Wisconsin to go to go uh, to match some of those other environments they have. Um, okay, next. So listen, I missed the next three. So you got to go fill me in. You got to fill me in on Howard Mastro, Bartlett Sokol, uh, and then Facundo Kennedy. Yeah. So Howard Mastro, Mastro Giovanni, Jersey versus Jersey. So there's a there's a, a yep. level of familiarity there. I don't know how they have wrestled before. Correct. Oof. Uh, I, I, I want to say yes. I can't cite. I can't cite. The, we were talking about how difficult the rankings are, Matt. High school rankings are even a bit more difficult than college because, like, to cite all of their results, it's like, dude, that is. I've watched a lot of these guys wrestle. I can't. I can't tell you. I don't know. But at minimum, you would think, you know, where they're located. I, in I would Jersey, guess. Yes, you, you would think that they've got some familiarity with each other. It looked like that yes. when they were wrestling. That these guys knew what each other was about. They. I mean, it was. It was a. I would say probably a more strategic match than some of the others, where there's no real you know, basis of knowledge. It, it definitely looked to me like there was some familiarity there, um, that they are more, not that it, it rivaled Fix versus um, Soriano by any means, but from a strategic standpoint, it, it was similar to that in my mind, the way they approached the match and they, the way they, they didn't really open up a, a ton. Um, yeah. Hence the four to two score. Um Where's Mastro Giovanni going? Uh, I believe Oklahoma State. Well, yes. what, one of I don't one if not both of them has committed to Oklahoma State. That, that's Howard's what I thought. I, I, yep. Yeah. So. All right. So I, I heard Bartlett killed Sokol. Is that true? He did, man. He is good. That good, he, huh? He he's really good. Yeah. Wow. And I and I haven't really, you know, for for me honestly, Ben. This was enjoyable looking at high school town, but I haven't re I haven't watched a lot of high school wrestling since I got out yeah. of coaching. I, I've kind of focused on international and college guys, uh -huh. um, so I am familiar. But I haven't wrestled. I haven't watched Bartlett a ton. I've I've seen him a little bit, but holy cow, is he talented? Super yeah. super talented. Yeah. Uh, Just I mean, uh, made it look easy. I mean, the score looked six to three, but that was that was an easy six to three match. It was a dominant yeah. six to three. Okay, so Trevor Mastro, the smaller one, is committed to Oklahoma State, and the bigger one is not uh, uncommitted at this point. Uh, the bigger one is, okay. is younger. So, uh, hey, I, I was really surprised. I, I guess I would have picked, I would have leaned towards Facundo over Kennedy. Um, Kennedy's future Hawkeye, obviously, and and controls two takedowns to zero. Uh, controls Facundo, right? Yeah, I mean, this, this could be one of the instances where maybe the crowd – played a factor. I think Kennedy was definitely hyped. I mean, you you could tell. I mean, he was Yeah. He was he was all, he was already acting like a Hawkeye when he was wrestling and yeah. you know the, the crowd the crowd really got behind him. I think that's probably one of the loudest matches of the evening. And uh Facundo, I mean, is absolutely phenomenal. I mean, but Kennedy yeah. kind of controlled the match and Yeah, it's just that's, Just that, kind of imposed his will me. more. I mean, I, I don't like talking about the, you know, the typical Iowa style. But I mean, he was in his face. They, his hands uh, Patrick heavy. Kennedy is an Iowa. That's an Iowa style guy right there. Yeah, Absolutely. to a T. I mean, there there was some heavy, heavy hands going on in that match. Yeah. Okay. Uh, two left. Van Ness wins his second match of the night over Jesse Mendez. I thought he looked great. I think I think he is Van Ness is very very impressive. Um. Anything else you want to say about him? I mean, you you already doted on him quite a bit. You think he's a stud? 
Yeah, I think he's one of those guys. I mean, when it, it he's one of those momentum guys it seems. Like obviously he's he's super high caliber from a wrestling standpoint, but it seems yeah. like this is one of those things that that it would be interesting to talk about at a certain point like momentum. When you get that wave and you, when you're in that vacuum of momentum, he's he's one of those guys when he's got momentum on his side. I just nobody can beat the kid. I mean, he just yeah. he just gets on a roll, and you just see like the level of belief when things are clicking for him. It just seems like yeah, it's just all about belief. And you know, we can talk talk about that word and put it on the sideline. Talent, it doesn't even matter. He just just the level of belief and conviction that he wrestles with is is really really impressive. Yeah, I, I agree. Okay, last one. Let, let's <laughs> we're, we're at forty five minutes, right, Matt? So we're going overtime right now. Um, we can give this one five long. minutes. No, listen, I didn't like it. I, I'm out on it. Here, here's why. I'll tell you why I'm out on it. And I texted the flow guys and told them I thought this was a bad, bad one by them. Um, this is who's number one. This is, I, I believe, in my opinion, the most prestigious high school event to get invited to and to wrestle at. I mean, this is a big deal for these guys. It's all ones versus two besides the four-man bracket at 132. Um, so you bring in Pat Pat uh, Downey, who's a who's a number one guy, but then you bring in this guy Nikki Rodriguez, who is you know has no collegiate accomplishments to speak of, and yes, he just took number two at ADC, ADCC, which is a very prestigious grappling tournament, but it was grappling, Matt it wasn't wrestling. There was no submissions in the rule set. You could he couldn't submit Pat Downey. It was a glorified wrestling match. How is a guy who has not had any collegiate success in wrestling going to beat Pat Downey? It's just not, it's freaking ridiculous. It's just not going to happen. It's absurd, Matt. I didn't like it. I'm with you. And I'm not even going to get excited <laughs> because I, I just thought it was you're a foregone gonna, conclusion. You're not going to get pissed I mean, if, off like me? I'm not even going to get pissed off because, I mean, if you look at the guy, if you look at Rodriguez, the guy was a D3 wrestler. And I don't, I don't think he even, yes. he, I, he never placed, he was never even an no. American D3. So yes, I don't care if he has a 30 pound advantage. He's wrestling one of the wrestling, wrestling one of it, the best guys in the world. And I get and what, yeah, Flo, he, I get what oh. he's trying to do, but if you really want to make the match interesting and if you're Pat Downey and you, you're touting, yes. I'll go anywhere, anytime, any place, wrestle yeah. anybody. Hey, if, you knew you were going to tune this guy up. That was no surprise. Throw, I'm surprised yes, he throw, didn't tech throw him Throw some or, submission. Throw some yes. submission there, man. Let there be some way where this guy can submit him. Right. Make it a grappling match. This is this is. This, yeah. I mean, the guy's a or, wrestler, or, but he's not a high level yeah. wrestler. He's a grappler. Or maybe two different periods where you do wrestling one period and grappling. And say, give the other guy. Listen, this guy had zero chance to win. Zero. Zero. G- give zero. The, that, give the dude some chance to win. Yeah. Give him a choke Ridiculous. out or a submission, a fighting chance, just like in boxing, yes. like with with McGregor and Mayweather, at least you have a fighter's chance. At least you can punch the guy and knock him out, even though that, there was yes. a, a very small likelihood of that ever happening. At least give a give a guy a puncher's chance, a fighter's chance, a submission give, chance. Give him something. Some type, yes, give him give him he had, something. He had nothing. All right. Had nothing. I mean, this nothing. is not a super match. No matter this how Flo hyped it, that was not. And I get it. You know what? I, I like that they're introducing and I think there's a you know there's a growing audience for the world of grappling. And I think that's great. Why don't yes. expose people to grappling instead of exposing them to yeah. what they already know? I, I mean, agree. Or give the guy give the guy some chance to win where you yeah, I uh, yeah, you're right. I'm done. I'm done here. Uh I love the most I, things Flo did. I thought this one was a miss though. That's it. Yeah, I mean, if you're really I th- I think it it kind of in some ways discredited the sport in the discipline of grappling. It's it's different yeah, yeah, than wrestling. Yeah, that's true. There's similarities, but I think they did it a dis- disservice. They were trying to promote grappling yeah. and expose and, it, yep. but they actually I think they hurt it in the process. Sure, that's 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 absolutely fair. All right. Uh, that's it, Matt. So hey, listen, we've been trying to talk about college upweights for two days now. Next time we get on this podcast, we're just going to go straight to the upperweights, uh, and give them a preview. Does that sound fair? It sounds good. We've been teasing, teasing too long. Let's jump into college. All right. Next time we're, that's what we're getting into. Peace. All right.